Hi everyone, it's good to be here today. Um, so today I'm going to be talking to you about the future. Um, I think there's a lot of interesting things happening now in science. And uh, science has come a long way. Um, many of us have gone from using you know, desktop computers to using your tablets to now communicating via uh, Apple Watch. So things have definitely come a long way. Um, myself, I have been working with many uh, uh, friends and collaborators from different universities, and I've been trying to look at how to change the way we teach and how to change the way we were learning. One of the things that I have been looking at is trying to use holograms for teaching, uh, teaching and also for uh, many other applications. Um, one of the things that I have been really fascinated by is, is the, micro, uh, the HoloLens by Microsoft. And I think it's actually come a long way uh, from the first time it was, it was developed and it was looked at. Um, currently, there have been a lot of interesting uh, applications that have, have been uh, implemented, have been uh, proposed uh, to help with trying to visualize different things. Um, for engineers, it has become a very useful tool. Uh, they could actually see things, and they can actually interact with things uh, using these uh, goggles, using, using this, this type of technology, um, which I think it's very, very interesting. Um, I remember being a, a boy and, and really looking at uh, television shows. I mean, one of the things I used to, I used to like uh, looking at and watching was uh, this show called The Jetsons. I don't know if you guys know about this, but... Um, and in the show, I mean, you kind of see all these futuristic things happening. Um, and the family, the Jetsons, they have a robot. Her, her name is Rosie. And, and Rosie is part of the, the family. Her, her, her job is to kind of help this, the kids and uh, also to clean, right? And also to kind of make sure that everything is, everything is working, everything is functional in, in the house that she's, uh, she's living in. Um, now, what I find is, is interesting is that a lot of this uh, recent uh, ha has, been, has been used. Um, you, can, you can kind of interact with your professor now uh, through, a, through a television screen. Your professor can come up and he could interact with you. He could, uh, he could ask you questions. Um, you could also respond to the professor and you could um, ask him any questions you have. So it's become very much of this kind of a, a world where um, things are now uh, digital. We're living in this digital world where uh, kind of interacting with people and, uh, and working with people has come to that using technology aspect. Um, not so long ago, actually, uh, being in my house, I saw my nephew on his phone, and uh, he was trying to catch a Pikachu. <laughs> so. Uh, so uh, it seems like technology is a part of us, and, and we're, we're very much attached to the technology, uh, which brings me back to kind of how do you make it, uh, how do you bring it into a classroom setting, which I think it's interesting. Um, recently, um, I've been working with trying to develop uh, this holographic technology, uh, you can call it, and it's become very, very uh, actually fun to, to, to play with it and to use it. Um, it's in the development process, so uh, they're, they're kind of trying to eliminate the goggles so that you have this image formed right in front of you. So who's to say that I'm really standing here today speaking to you? Maybe it's my hologram that's speaking to you, okay? Um, but it's, it's something that creates a lot of uh, challenges as well, and one of the challenges that it creates is, is that human interaction um, challenge, right? Because a lot of students want to have that interaction with their professor or with other students. Um, so it does create kind of different challenges that we, we have to address and we have to look at. Um, but I think overall, this is where we're going. We're going into this into this world, into this world where everything you look at and everything you interact with is going to be in this holographic form. 
Um, and I feel like it becomes even more interesting when you walk into a classroom and everything you observe is a hologram to your desks, to your television, to your uh, boards. Everything that you look at is, is a hologram. And you don't have to wear the hollow lens, or you don't have to wear a technology, or you don't have to uh, look at it via a tablet or via a screen. But you can be there, and you can interact with it, and it could interact with you. Now, in, in education, this is actually very interesting to look at, because a lot of schools are trying to have this kind of engagement with students. They haven't fully gone to this realm, a realm, but they have brought in robots, and robots have interacted with students. Um, and in many countries, it's, it's already become something that schools have been working on and have been programming, so the robot can also speak different languages. So if you have someone that doesn't speak or, or is not native uh, English uh, speaker, you can have the, the robot speak in Spanish, or you can have the robot speak in another language. So students feel comfortable, and they're able to understand what the, the, the course uh, objectives or the day-to-day -day objectives are, right? So it becomes a tremendous uh, asset, tremendous value to have something like that. Also, the other thing which I, th I find quite interesting is trying to have it so that students can also kind of imagine their parents appearing in front of them. Let's say the students are not doing their assignments, right, or they're not doing their homeworks, right? You can have your mother or father appear right in front of you in a hologram form, tell you, you must do your homework, okay? Or you will hear it once you get back home, right? So this becomes very, very uh, interesting, right? J not just for the students, but also for those that are involved in the educational setting, right? This could also work wonders for administra administration or for other teachers in trying to develop a professional development. Right, where you actually have teachers interacting with a hologram and showing them how to inter interact and how to engage with different types of students. So I find all this to be very interesting. And not so long ago, I actually was sitting in an audience listening to a famous physicist by the name of Michio Kaku. And what he said, which was very interesting, is he said that inside that birthday card, you have a microchip, right? And we've come so far that that microchip has so much integration in it, right? Or it's so sophisticated, right? That you can do many, many things with it, right? So just imagine if we've come this far, in, uh, in trying to create new technology or trying to make the technology better than what it is today, right? Just imagine in a couple years what that's going to look like, right? Um, I feel like in the next five years, a lot of this will be seen and will be observed. A lot of people uh, will be looking at this and will be kind of wondering how how this works, how, this, how does this work, right? How does this happen, that you just have this um, holographic image? And this holographic image is really engaging with you and answering questions and looking at you and also maybe giving you a picture or giving you history of the world, right? Can you imagine that? So, just sitting uh, and, and kind of uh, also engaging with other scientists, I feel like that there's a lot of good and there's a lot of things that we also have to work on. There's a lot of challenges 
as, as I mentioned, one of them being the human interaction. But, of course, before we even um, came up with all this new technology, before we developed this new technology and we came up with tablets and we came up with these uh, Apple Watch and all these different things, right, we used to kind of interact on a face-to-face -face basis, right? We, we would kind of get together and, you know, if there's something that we had to talk or we had to address, it would be done it would be done on a face-to-face -face basis. But, I mean, we've become adaptive. We've all become adaptive to the changes of technology, right? Technology is now everywhere we look, right? It's, it's, it's in our classroom, it's in our car, it's in our homes. It's everywhere. So, it's not to say that we won't completely adjust to having a hologram or having something speak to us. That's something that we're not used to. But I think eventually a lot of these challenges will be overcome. And I think that the future does look quite interesting. Um, the other thing which I find to be intriguing is, is having everything in, in, your, in your classroom be connected to the hologram. Uh, and and this, this would be an interesting thing, because I, I feel like when you're in a classroom, you want to not just engage with one hologram, but you might want to engage with multiple holograms. So just imagine if just having your friend there in a hologram form, but your friend is in, in a different part of the country, but just having them be there, right, and, and inspiring you and motivating you, right, that, that is something tremendous, right, to have. Uh, it, it will, of course, give you motivation, and it will inspire you to work much, much harder. So I think that a lot of this is, is, is going to happen, and, and it, will, it will happen in the next couple of years. And just like when I was a boy and, and I, I watched, you know, the Jetsons and I asked myself the question, will this ever happen? Will this ever work? Right? And now a couple years later, right, we have all this, right? We have most of this, right? We're even to the point where your car might fly, right? So, I mean, I think many of these things will come to light. And just like... Mikio Kaku said, things, things are changing, and technology is always changing. Thank you so much.